Okay, got it. Uh, you guys, are you ready for this? Are you ready? All right. Your headliner, give it up for Brianna Hampton! but I'm feeling it. Thank you all so much for being here. Uh, quick up top, how great is Renee? She made you feel good about moving forward. She's like, hi, do what I say, but I am adorable. I love her too much. All the comics have been wonderful. Uh, if I don't do well in this audience, I'm gonna have to rethink some life decisions. Because this is all my friends and family. Just like, please, this is the last card I've got. Uh, begging you to come to every, but this is the last time, I promise. And thank you for singing to Shannon, too. Uh, that was great. Uh, the part I love most is I know she hated every moment of it. <laughs> Shannon is so angry with me right now. And maybe one less in the audience. But um, I was back there being like, they're doing it! <laughs> and made her run a race with me this morning. She hates it on her birthday. I do whatever I say, you do! <laughs> She gave me gifts on her birthday. That's, uh, that's our relationship, so. If you're thinking about becoming a closer friend, think about it harder. It's not fun. You can ask Shannon. I'm so excited, I'm so excited. Thank you all so much. I'm very, very excited. Uh, I'm very pale. You knew that. You saw that. I wear so much sunscreen, nine out of 10 dermatologists recommend you just stand near me. I get told uh, I glow, a compliment on the skin. I'm like, oh, you glow, it's very nice. Uh, but it's actually accurate because after the third layer of SPF 100, your body starts rejecting it. <laughs> <laughs> so that reflection is real. I have many pictures where it's like, wow, are you that white? I'm like, well, look at the pores. It's just sweating out of the pores. So, <laughs> so come in for those hugs <laughs> on a sunny day. You will regret it. <laughs> uh, I, I like going outside, even though it's scary with the sun. Uh, it just changes my experience, you know, wearing so much sunscreen. Like, I was in the jungle, because I'm adventurous, and um, in an open-air Jeep, because I'm adventurous, but I wasn't driving, I'm not that adventurous. And, um, and, I, and I was in, like, the Virgin Islands, and it was very exciting, and at one point we went under this, this like, tree, and everybody started squealing, because there were bugs all over everyone's body, you know? And uh, I looked down, because I was like, oh no! And all of mine had died on impact. <laughs> They just immediately fossilized, like those amber fossils you see. I was like, ah, this is so fun. My experience is just like yours. <laughs> I took a genetics test not long ago. I nailed it. I didn't even have to study, so. You know what I'm talking about, this guy. Did not have to study for that thing. Like, if I sold my eggs based on my test results, my slogan would be, you're gonna like the way they look. <laughs> I guarantee it. So that's pretty exciting. I found out something cool in my test, though. I found out I have more Neanderthal gene than 98% of the population. <laughs> yeah, Neanderthals, not technically human beings. <laughs> So while your ancestors were out settling exciting new lands, mine were straight up just settling for what was in front of them. <laughs> to make sense on how I attracted all my mates. So I'm like, oh, the more you know, you know? <laughs> it's pretty cool. Uh, Neanderthals were also not known for being super intelligent, uh, but I think I speak pretty good for someone with a limited brain capacity. <laughs> brain. Brain capacity. Brain capacity. I think I speak pretty good. It's gone. It's gone. Um, I have cousins. From this test, you can like connect with your cousins. I found out I have cousins who are in the 99th percentile Neanderthal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I want to talk to them about it because I think that's fascinating. But neither one of us has the communication skills <laughs> to get through a conversation. So we've gotten as far as like, you big body thick skull. Me too. <laughs> That's it. 
I do have a thick skull. That's a weird thing to know about yourself. It's a joke in my family, because I'm from Indiana. We got a joke about something. So, um, so we're like, how's your skull today? Still thick? Waka waka. Uh, <laughs> tell you what, I kill in those Indiana rooms. I just, uh, thick skulls. Anyway, uh, I have a thick skull, but I've known this because I got in a, uh, in a playground accident when I was younger. I went uh, face first into a log, because uh, it was the 90s, you were allowed to live. So, um, I went face first into a log. <laughs> And I got this Harry Potter scar on my forehead. Uh, Cause I was acting like a Gryffindor, but I'm a total Hufflepuff. So. <laughs> okay. Let's be real, the fact that I analyzed it makes me a Ravenclaw. Um, the fact that I lied to you makes me a Slytherin. So, good luck sorting hat. <laughs> I gotta say. Uh, and for those of you who are loving this Harry Potter thing, I got one more for you. Those of you who aren't, just hang in. There's only one more. Anyway, in case you're wondering, the log is a horcrux of mine. So if, if it gets destroyed, a part of me also dies. But I'm a comedian, so I'm already so dead inside. Good luck finding out which part. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> it's my Harry Potter. So I went... So I went face first in this log and I had to get rushed to the ER. But luckily, because my skull was so thick, the doctor said there wasn't any brain damage. So, yeah, but luckily because my skull was so thick, the doctor said there wasn't any brain damage. <laughs> yeah, but luckily because my skull was so thick, the doctor said there wasn't any brain damage. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Um, we had both my parents take this test because we wanted to find out where all this Neanderthal came from. And uh, my mom passed with flying colors. You know, a couple screw ups, who hasn't had that? Uh, my dad's test results came back inconclusive because somehow he failed to properly spit into a cup. <laughs> so I think we found out where all the cavemen came from. <laughs> so there's that. And if you believe in creationism, I might as well say I'm 98th percentile unicorn. <laughs> and this scar, that's where they took off the horn. <laughs> also explains why I do this a lot. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I have uh, red hair, in case you didn't notice. I get an ass with red hair. Yo, do the curtains match the drapes? Gross. I'm like, well, the drapes are dyed and the curtains are waxed, so. <laughs> We've got a wax floor and custom ceiling in this home. <laughs> also, why are you window shopping on my body? <laughs> Get out. I do have to wax, I have to wax. You're learning a lot about me. We're gonna learn even more. I have to wax my lady parts, because if I don't, I go up an entire pant size. <laughs> And 97% of my Neanderthals just concentrated right here. It's, it's like, and it grows so fast. It's like an ongoing Chia commercial down there. Just like, yeah, yeah, you're a monster. It's just. <laughs> like, I walk out of the salon with a five o'clock shadow on my six o'clock, is what I'm saying. <laughs> and when I go to the salon, these poor waxers, they just hide and scurry, like, no, not me, not today, not that. <laughs> I do go to, I go to one brave woman regularly, because you have to go regularly, you know? I'll go back and she's like, did all of this grow back in a month? I'm like, I was here yesterday. <laughs> what is wrong with me? <laughs> I have a terrible sense of spatial capacity. Like, was Pluto ever a planet? <laughs> that one takes a second. <laughs> We're about to enter into territory where I'm gonna do a bunch of one-liners. Am I good at them? Not really. <laughs> do I like writing them? Sure. Should I just tweet them? Absolutely. <laughs> but you know, we're gonna try them. Because most of my jokes take like a shimmy afterwards to like hit and I'm getting sore. I'm getting sore, so. So here we go, Let's see how this goes. Another one-liner, you really sold them on that, Brianna. Good work. Um, I have a thing for men in uniform because it tells me someone's already broken them. <laughs> so I get to go in for the kill. Yes. <laughs> you get me. I'm 
you're not a pilot, sorry. I know a lot of you are, so good on you. Um, <laughs> most people are pilots. I don't know how to fly a plane. Here's what I do know. I do know how to keep a plane in the air if it's being turbulent, and I'll share it with you because I've learned this from a lot of trial and error. Uh, what you do when it starts getting turbulent is you just tense up your entire body and you white knuckle the seats. <laughs> and then you just, you turn to whoever's next to you and say, it's fine, it's fine, we're gonna be fine, this happens all the time. And then you pray to whatever God you believe in or any God you've ever heard of and you pray for a second chance and that's it. Uh, my experience, it's worked every time. <laughs> so if you're flying in a turbulent plane with me, don't mess with me. I am keeping that thing in the air. <laughs> don't talk to me. <laughs> um, I don't have a therapist, but I do have a life coach. So if you're wondering how millennial I am, that should answer your question. <laughs> uh, I love technology, but I do not like lasers. Here's why. Why is it some lasers are totally fine to play with, like your cat loves them, but don't look directly in them because it can hurt your eyes. Other lasers fix eyesight. <laughs> why is it? <laughs> it's like an ongoing, lasers are Illuminati, is what I'm saying. <laughs> some lasers you pay to play with, and it's like you have a good time, you have fun, and other lasers can cut diamonds. <laughs> what is the last thing you see before you get sniped? A laser. <laughs> don't make me like them. I don't want to. <laughs> I'm not gonna. <laughs> do you guys ever do this? Do you ever, um, do you ever ask a large group of people that you're having a one-sided conversation with? Do you ever do this? <laughs> do you ever do that? <laughs> me neither. Hold on, hold on. I feel like the joke is like, it's vodka. <laughs> no, it's water, it's just, it's just water. Um, I was home not long ago. I used to be quite the musician back in my day. In case you couldn't tell by my, I don't know, breath control. Uh, <laughs> a general an inability to communicate with humans normally. Um, I was a musician and I found one of my old instruments and I thought it would be fun if I brought it here to share with you because when I picked it back up after 20 years, I could still play one song flawlessly. So I thought I'd play a little game of, guess what year Brianna learned this instrument in? Oh, Rene! <laughs> okay, you ready? <coughs> guess what year I learned this instrument? 20 years, hadn't touched it. Picked it back up. Flawless. and I only say that because the first time I did that joke, they said 97 and I took their word for it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we're saying 97 because that's what these guys said a while back. So 97, very proud of that. Um, what else? Are you going to stay on? Oh no. Oh, look at Renee. Renee, thank you. That bit was improvised. <laughs> How fun. <laughs> we're having fun. <laughs> What else? Uh, I have HPV. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So do you. Everybody has HPV. I call it God's Sexual Certificate of Participation. Just everyone has it. I was, I was mentioning this uh, at a show the other day, and this girl came on afterwards and was like, I do not have HPV. Like, I know that for a fact. I got checked. I did have sex, uh, sexual partners. I had like 60 sexual partners in one summer, but no HPV. <laughs> I was like, are you kidding me? You have 60 strands of HPV. It hides. It hides. What's wrong with you? <laughs> it's terrifying. The only way you know you have HPV, well, first off, fellas, you never know. So good on you. Pew, pew, pew. That's what you're doing to women. HPV, HPV. Uh, <laughs> Doesn't affect you, but for women, the only way you know is when it starts like doing a little two-step towards cervical cancer. <laughs> Super fun. And mine did that. Mine, mine turned on the lights and started the music, you know, and was like, here we go. 
just a step. You guys, oh, we're not going that dark. Just took a step. <laughs> and I was really, I was, I was nervous about it because I didn't understand like the strand I had. And I learned that there are more strands of HPV than there are stars in the sky. Whoa. Yeah, unlike a bright night in downtown Los Angeles. Several. <laughs> <laughs> just several. I don't think there is a number bigger than the stars in the sky. That would be terrifying. <laughs> But my doctor wanted, wanted to make me feel better about it, you know? So she was like, you just have to think of men as walking bags of disease. <laughs> Her words. <laughs> I was like, I already think less of men and still like to have sex with them. So <laughs> that diagnosis is not keeping me from Pokemoning all these strands of HPV, you know? <laughs> Gotta catch them all. <laughs> HPV. <laughs> Another nerd joke. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Um, I'm from Indiana. It's a state, thank you. Uh, Indiana is pretty cool because uh, the people who come out of there, our personalities are as flat as the land that surrounds us. <laughs> we are a boring people. When I started traveling, I realized that no one, either in the country or out of the country, really knows where Indiana is, so I had to create a reference point for them. I was like, oh cool, well, you guys know um, Indiana Jones? That like, town? Yeah, that town. <laughs> That's right, Burke. That's my buddy. We call ourselves Naptown because it is a comfy place to take a rest. As you head to another place, do not stay. Your life will be one big nap. Um, yeah, so I would tell them, like, you know Indiana Jones, right, the movie? And they'd be like, oh, yeah, of course. And I was like, yeah, well, uh, where I'm from, we also have that movie. I had nothing. I was like, I was there's no, that's the most famous thing about this. And it's unrelated, so. <laughs> that's weird. I have a terrible sense of style. I don't know how to dress myself. Uh, Shannon, the good friend you sang to earlier, she actually texted me like five days before this and was like, what are you wearing? Because you cannot be trusted. <laughs> I was like, I don't, I don't know. I, I'd gotten as far as maybe a t-shirt. She's like, dear God. So she starts sending me pictures and was like, no, 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 no. It was very bad. So this is thanks to Shannon. Uh, I normally have a terrible sense of style. Uh, I, got, I got told once that my style was very yodelay hee who <laughs> And I took that as a compliment. <laughs> Because to me, that meant memorable, you know what I mean? It made you feel something. I almost threw it a dress that I had worn several times because I thought it fit so poorly. But before I threw it out, I looked at it one more time and realized I'd been wearing it backwards. <laughs> out in public, several times. Which meant my thought process several times with this dress was, oh God, this is so tight in the front and the back is like really big. <laughs> And I don't like this zipper here. This is, and like this little tag is really uncomfortable. It's itchy on my chest. But people say this sore is happening, so here we go. It's very bad. It's the worst, you know? I'm, uh, I, being from Indiana, I grew up, this is gonna shock you, a little sheltered. So I honestly thought drunk driving for a long time meant having too much water that your decisions were impaired because you had to go potty. <laughs> like, we're so basic from Indiana, I'm uncomfortable being called a basic bitch because that sounds exotic, you know? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm just a lady who loves her Target. <laughs> <laughs> and boy, do I love calling it Target. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a local Target. <laughs> it sounds like a boutique, but it's just big box store prices. <laughs> when I get dressed up, I wear my Coles, but normally it's Target. Have you been? They're having a sale. Always a sale. <laughs> just channel my mom for a second. Uh, for, forgive me for that. Uh, I'm too trusting. Being from the Midwest, we're very trusting people. Uh, but I have a problem with trusting people too easily. Like most people see red flags when they meet someone and they think like, danger, stay away. I just see the color red and I'm like, red is my favorite color. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing could possibly go wrong with my brand new best friend. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that, don't do that. A lot has gone wrong. <laughs> 
People are like, why are you naked and beat up in the middle of the road? I'm like, I don't know, my best friend just left me here. <laughs> I've known the guy for three hours, he's never done anything like this, I swear, it's probably my fault, it's probably my fault. <laughs> I said something, I did something. I lived in Chicago for a while, and I lived down, uh, in order to get to my home, I had to go down like a dark alley, because I make good decisions. And, um, and one night I'm walking home, and this guy was following me for a while, and I turned down my dark alley, and he turned down too, and my first thought was, oh my God, Brianna, don't fart. <laughs> And then my second thought, uh, which should be where the logic kicks in, was like, my logic was like, I wonder if he is lost. <laughs> I should keep my expensive iPhone out and hand it to him so he can get directions home. <laughs> that iPhone uh, was lost in a taxi cab a couple weeks later uh, at 2 a.m. And being, being me, I sat at the corner and waited for the guy to come back. <laughs> I was like, here, two to three, I'll just wait. I'll just, he'll, he'll be back. He'll, he'll be back. He'll be back. No, 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 sir. No, thank you. He'll be back. He'll be back. No, no, no. Not prostituting myself. He'll be back. He never came back. Some random guy did drive by, though, and I flagged him down around 2.30 and was like, excuse me, I've lost my phone, and my roommate's not here. I'm literally very vulnerable. May I use your phone and get in your car? He's like, of course. And so... Uh, it was fine. I think sometimes people are so shocked they just take pity, you know? <laughs> like that happened one time, the first time I traveled abroad, I went to Rome, and the first thing they'll tell you, anytime you research any time going to Rome, the first thing they will tell you is do not get in the random cars that people usher you into. Go to the metered taxi stand. You can guess what I did. I was like, hello, you look nice. Sure, sure, right over here. Got it. <laughs> So I was in some random dude's car with a bunch of other dumb Americans, and uh, I was the last one dropped off. I did get dropped off at my location, you know, and then he quoted me a price, which he just felt, he was like, just let me I don't remember what he said. <laughs> Something Italian. And uh, I just looked at him and was like, okay. So I gave him that plus tip, because this man had been nice to me, and uh, he looked at me and gave me half of it back. The scam artist couldn't scam me because he felt so bad. <laughs> so don't feel bad for us. We're very lucky people. <laughs> like we literally keep Nigerian scammers in business. That is a that's a pure Midwestern sponsored business. <laughs> When you see those emails, you probably think what everyone else thinks. When I see them, I'm like, oh my God, this man's in a financial pickle. <laughs> <laughs> All he needs is my bank account information, a routing number, no problem. I'll throw my social for good measure. <laughs> like, we're so easy to rob, you know? You just have to be nice about it. Like, hey, give me that purse. What do we say? <laughs> Please, here you go. Now what do we say? Thank you. You're welcome. I'm not gonna cancel those cards for a week because you were a gentleman. <laughs> now if you'd please take the new car you just got and uh, drive me to a bus stop. I've got some figuring out to do. <laughs> uh, can't show any emotions. Very sad, push them down. <laughs> we do from the Midwest. We don't show our emotions. I was, uh, I like going home on occasion. Uh, it's fun to go home, but uh, I have to kind of exaggerate how my life is out here because, well, first of all, I don't exaggerate too much because Midwesterners snap real quick from like, good for you to, oh, you think you're better than me. Just, just like that. So, um, so I just tweak it. So I'll tell my parents like, oh yeah, I just, uh, I just booked a commercial. It was an infomercial. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty big in it. I was featured here, model number two. But me and the director, we're like vibing, you know, the director and I. And like, uh, I was actually told to tone it down. <laughs> <laughs> I was told my acting was too big for an infomercial. I don't know the last time you saw an infomercial, but let me give you an example. If it's for shoes, it's literally people being like, I forgot how to walk! <laughs> And I was too big for that. 
but I get paid, you know, I get paid really well. I got paid in the product, which I found out when I asked for the check and they handed me a straightener that only works half the time. So, <laughs> so that's nice. I think, uh, I think my friends at home have the wrong idea of what my life in California is like because they were coming up to me like pregnant with their second kid from a childhood sweetheart. It's always a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just like, hey, uh, tell me about LA. Do you just, do you go out all the time? Do you have a lot of fun? Do you just, uh, is it fun to do whatever you want whenever you want with whoever you want? Is that <laughs> <laughs> I just responded like, hey, tell me about your finances, you know? Is that a double? Is tw that's twice as much, right, double income? <laughs> How much do you pay for that mansion you live in? <laughs> Quick question, when you sleep with a man that knows your name, does that feel good on the inside? <laughs> grass is always greener, you know what I mean? Also, you guys have grass. <laughs> I did that joke once and this guy came up to me afterwards and said, and I quote, I like the face you make when you cry. <laughs> Obviously, he's my new best friend. <laughs> I was like, let's go, buddy. You and me forever and ever. <laughs> it's pretty great. I'm a dog mom. Listen, I don't have a joke about it. I just went this whole time without mentioning it, so. <laughs> Good on me. I've been workshopping jokes about dogs because I've been like, man, I really want to bring them up. I want to bring them up. But I just want to bring them up because I want you to ask me to show pictures of them. That's it. So if we just have a real moment. I love my dog so much. <laughs> Nothing funny about it, I just love them so much. <laughs> They're both emotional support animals, because it's LA, of course they are. <laughs> and the guy who certified them, of course he didn't need to see them. I just uh, told him, yeah, they're great. He's like, okay. His name uh, was Dr. Bark. <laughs> very true, real name. I was very excited about it. They make me happy though. I believe in, I believe in wellness and health and, and being happy. Uh, I, do, I do yoga. So, yeah, whatever, judge away. Here's why I like doing yoga, because I like to be right. And I don't know if you've ever been to a yoga class, but it is hard to do it wrong. You can show up and roll out your mat and take a nap, and they're like, wow, look at you. <laughs> I bet you feel so recharged right now, huh? <laughs> yell at your neighbor and they're like, oh, this guy is letting out some serious aggression he's been holding in. Good for him. <laughs> you can leave two minutes after the class and they're like, you are living your truth. I see you. I love you. <laughs> it's amazing. I drink kombucha. Yeah. Uh, you guys, you may have tried it. This crowd may have tried it. It's, a, it's like this health drink. It's vinegary. It tastes the same going down as it does when you puke it right back up. <laughs> It is awful. And I just down it, down it, down it. Because um, I believe in doing weird stuff for your health. Like I once got colon hydrotherapy. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. If you don't know what that is, it's essentially choosing to do an enema. But without all those pesky doctors telling you, you have to. So you just Googled it and someone was like, yeah, yeah, it's good. And I was like, great, let's do that. I bought it on a Groupon. <laughs> Anytime you're doing an invasive health procedure, you should cut costs on corners. So, <laughs> cut corners on costs. You got it. You got it. I was so thinking. I was thinking about it again. I was just like, no, 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 no. Uh, it's pretty bad. The whole thing was the worst part. Like, I showed up to the spa. I'd done no research, and I was like, I am here for colon hydrotherapy, and they're like, well, that's in the back. I was like, I knew that much. <laughs> That is a poop joke <laughs> and a roundabout way to get there. <laughs> so, yeah. I showed up and I and the lady had all this equipment and all I for all I know she bought it on a Groupon. Like I don't I didn't know anything about her and she starts and it was uh, awful, as awful as you would think. But the part that bothered me the most is I'm trusting this woman, right? And I I'm thinking she has some medical training or something, but she's spending the whole time convincing me she, kn she knows exactly what she's doing. <laughs> so at a real doctor, they just maybe tell you beforehand, then they just do it. This woman was like, so I'm gonna push this button, which I have pushed a bunch of times. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and all that water
sure that I am very used to filling up and all this. So it's going to start going through your body, which, and then the pain, uh, for sure, that's normal. So here we go. And uh, yeah, so we wait a while now. And uh, so now I just do the in urine pain. Yeah, for sure. That's very normal. And, uh, very uncomfortable. She told me to stay away from uh, caffeine, chocolate, and alcohol. I was like, that's breakfast. <laughs> I went from the spa to a 7-Eleven and bought a six pack of Corona, because I know what I am. You know? <laughs> it's just like, I gotta balance this out, I don't like it. Um, it feels so good to be back doing stand-up. I took some time off because uh, I met a fella, and I fell in love. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that guy! But when I was going back to do shows and stuff, I wasn't really doing jokes. I was just so, I was just like proselytizing to the comedians about love. I was like, you guys, in the morning, the birds, they sing. <laughs> <laughs> Why is everybody so sad? Don't you have someone to go home to? <laughs> <laughs> so I had to recalibrate so I wasn't hated by everyone constantly. Uh, this fella and I, we, we uh, dated for a while and then we moved in together, which is a pretty big step, yeah, uh, especially since I lived alone for 10 years before I moved in with him. In that time, I had developed some horror movie-like tendencies. <laughs> I didn't know. I live alone, I work from home, I didn't know. But he would come home and I'd just be at the top of the stairs like, come play with me. <laughs> He'd walk in and be like, hey, who are you talking to? And I'd be like, no one, there's no one here. Hi! Hi, everybody! <laughs> oh, oh my god. It's pretty bad. That's what I'm saying. I also uh, acted like a, like a stray cat that's been domesticated but doesn't know how to feel about it. For example, he would walk in and I'd be in the corner like, hey, you're home. <laughs> Whatever. I mean, I don't care. Like, I'm noticing, but I don't care. I'll go back to the streets. Do you understand? I will go back. <laughs> but uh, since you're home, if you want to, like, feed me and give me affection. <laughs> no? Whatever. Whatever. I don't need you. <laughs> I express my emotions like a cat, too. I just leave decapitated birds this, on the porch for them. Like, I made this for you. <laughs> I'm the best. <laughs> I had some trust issues when we first started dating. We worked through some of them, but uh, he would give me uh, what is known, I think it's called a, a compliment. <laughs> and I didn't know how to take it. He'd be like, wow, you look beautiful. And I'd be like, oh, thank you. Who is she? <laughs> He's like, I don't know how to answer that without getting in trouble. I'm like, oh, so you're in trouble now. Oh, you're in trouble. What'd you do? He's like, I mean, this is a trap. This is a trap. It was a trap. <laughs> For sure it was a trap, always. And he has a normal person job, and I'm in sweats all day. So he'd like leave, he'd look normal and nice, and he'd leave, and I'd be like, oh, where are you headed? <laughs> oh, work. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you seeing at work today? Other people? <laughs> <laughs> Do they ask about me? <laughs> <laughs> Am I mister? <laughs> I am so lonely, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Like, there's certain phrases you hear in romantic comedies that are wonderful in romantic comedies, but in real life, don't translate. Like, you're the best thing I have in my life! <laughs> <laughs> Everything got better when you showed up! <laughs> I can't live without you! It's <laughs> pretty bad. <laughs> Uh, we, uh, we got in a fight early on that was almost a deal breaker, and it was out in public, and uh, I think it was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna tell you what happened, you can be the, your own judge of it, but uh, this is essentially what it went down. We're out in public, we're dancing, a few months in, we're like totally in love, we're these friends, there's a live band, we're drinking, oh my god. And then um, someone in the crowd behind me yells, free bird! And I turned around and it was him. I didn't know I was dating the free bird guy. I don't even 
don't even think my body came with my head as I swiveled around. I was like, what did you just say? <laughs> You're the free bird guy? You're the drunk asshole at a bar who yells to the live band to play free bird? You don't want to free bird. I just want to hear yourself yell free bird. <laughs> did not tell me you're the free bird guy. <laughs> like, I cannot. Uh, what, are kids gonna come out of the womb screaming, free bird, like what? <laughs> what is wrong with you? And he was like, I, I just thought it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't get that, you're the free bird guy. Stop it, stop it. Just stop it. <laughs> It's worked out with this fella because we recently got engaged. Thank you. We're giving him a shot. Um, as I've been talking about that, that is the easiest way to get applause from an audience. So for the next 10 years, I'm going to have just gotten engaged. <laughs> Whenever there's a lull, I just got engaged. <laughs> Aren't I brave? Um, <laughs> it's made me feel validated as a woman, which is an odd feeling because my entire life I was trying to validate myself. But it wasn't until a man came along and was like, I'll take it. <laughs> that the world was like, oh wow, you're amazing. <laughs> Look at what you did. I'm like, I tried to do things before this, but thank you. Um, and I was bad at it. I was bad at getting engaged, which is sort of hard in a traditional relationship. Because uh, all you have to do as a woman is uh, just put your hands over your mouth, say yes, <laughs> and pose for whatever photographers might be around. Um, I didn't do that. So I'm going to tell you what I did. It's pretty embarrassing. Um, he did everything right. He surprised me. He was in our apartment. He was down on one knee. And I turned the corner and I saw him and I went, No! No, no, no! And I ran around the corner, fell into the other room, and started uh, ugly crying in fetal position, just like, nah, nah. Like snot coming out of my eyes, like just the ugliest. And our dog thought he had done something wrong, so as he's trying to like come near, she's like protecting me. She's like, get away, you're a bad guy! <laughs> this like poor vulnerable man in this beautiful moment I have ruined. He was just like, uh, may I approach? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> run from me. <laughs> I love you so much. I don't want to hurt you, but I will. I will. I will spend the rest of your life just ruining it for fun, for the fun of it. <laughs> when I'm low, I'm going to make you lower. <laughs> You, you're young. Do not fall on this grenade. <laughs> Run from me. He's like, is that a no? I was just like, give me that diamond. First rule of our marriage, I change my mind and my mood whenever I feel like it. <laughs> With no explanation. <laughs> He's very excited about it, is what I'm saying. My name is Brianna Hansen. You guys, that's it! That's it! I'm going to give all of you makeouts and hugs, especially for you, especially for Nanoya. You. You're getting big makeouts. Thank you so much. Thank you to all the comics. Okay, for real, I'm going to cry. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye.